who've had, have had terrific lives. We've now have given them music lessons, and we've got the recorders because now Johannesburg Philharmonic, who have made links with, have said they will give them lessons. But we have to get them transported from the centre, which can be quite expensive. Again, um, our street boys have been um, accepted at the Athlon School of Music. Another link of mine. These boys have had really bad lives. They've all been boy soldiers. They've all been um, hired out as, as, as prostitutes again. And it means that they are very aggressive. And so we decided the best instrument would be to help them would be these, which it is. They are really having a way of time blowing it all out. This is one of my ex-street boys who now comes back into the project. Like most of our street kids, all they want to do is to change things like myself. So he is into the music and he is helping those kids. And being a street kid, it's really difficult. It's a feral instinct. As I've said before, you sense far more. A, a street kid knows another street kid. You don't have to express yourself. And many times I'm like the Pied Piper where I'm going because they're all following me. And it's the same ticket. They're all, <laughs> they're all after it. So that's, that's really good. And here again, we've got some of our girls who've had a really bad life and living in our hostels and workshops. And they're very, very extremely nervous and sensitive, but do find um, some comfort by having classical dance. And that's where we've got a link with one of our guys and he gives them that. These boys here, you can't see their faces, but because they've all been boy soldiers, they age from 10, 11, 12, and um, as you know, when I ran away to the circus, that was what showed me uh, how to communicate. And so my friend at Zips Up Circus Rent, he has offered all the circus training for the kids. Not only that, they have a day of fun where they're clowns and they do tumbling and they do all sorts of things. And as I said before, when you have been a member of one circus in the world, you're actually natural members of that, everyone. So every circus in the world is your family. So I can go to any circus in the world and I can say, could you please help one of our kids and then we'll do so. So that's a whole group of kids that go there. This is one of our workshops for street living boys. We haven't always got room for kids in our shelters until the transition period is over and we've got kids moving out. Because I take care of kids from birth to 24. And that means we've got the creche, we've got the preschool, we've got the primary school, we've got the, the orphanage and we've got the home with <coughs> kids and then they go into the vocational training and by the time they're 18 to 22, these kids then have got some skill which they, they learn and they make things and sell them at the market and then half of the money that they get, half goes to their uh, future accommodation and half goes to get a, a bank account for them so that when they are 24, they have a skill, they have a bank account, and they have a place to live. And this again is, um, is, is one of Amy Willis. She's sitting here, now she's very good at ceramics. One of our street kids comes back in and teaches her how to do it. But unfortunately, the ceramic section of the project did take a, a back step because we didn't have enough funding. But with the funding, we've got it again. She's amazing, and that means she can sell that uh, along with the other students and sell it to the market, so then again, we've got that, that, that link that they can go into um, training. These are the girls that made the, um, the, the band for, for the school of the Hand in Hand. These girls, again, uh, one or two of them, I think, are pregnant there. As I say, they're, they're always attacked and have their babies, but we take the babies into the shelter, and then we get the girls into the workshop so that they know their baby's taken care of. They're also earning money. We've also got a building next to the shelter that they can live in and house mothers. So that when they leave the shelter, when they leave the workshop, they can pick up their baby and live with their baby in the house as, as normal, but they know their baby's going to be safe. Here's me at Jukalese with Marilyn. And as I said before, I try to save as much money as possible so that every penny goes to the project. So I don't do transfers by bank because as many of you know, you put money in the bank and you want to transfer an amount to another bank account, the bank makes some money. And then when my, my guys try and get the money out of their account, that bank makes some money. So no mates, you're not making money out of our kids. So I put the money into the Pegasus account when I go to South Africa, I take the money out of the cash machine. And it's great because we get, we get the actual rate of exchange, which is far higher than you would get it if you got it from a bank here. Does that make sense to you? So then I hand the money, and I have this money in my pocket here, and all the guys are sitting here, and I said, hey guys, guess what? I've got dosh, which is the word, of course. And I brought it out, and they didn't realize how much it was, and they were screaming. Wow, 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 wow. 
So Marilyn spoke hold of the money, and then after that bit, she gave it me back so that I could put it in the envelope, but I thought I would tease the kids, and I threw it up in the air. And of course it landed, well, one of them street kids, <laughs> they all chased after it, and all brought it back to me, and they were all so thrilled to actually touch the money, actually. And then uh, we put it back in the envelope. And this is what we have now got, uh, again, thanks to, uh, um, to, to South Willow. It means now we've got this, this container, which is a workshop. And that workshop is going to be for our street living boys that come in every day. And this is now another project of mine called um, a junk orchestra. Now, the junk orchestra means that the guys are going to be making musical instruments <coughs> out of recyclable materials. The model is because street kids believe they are rubbish, easily used, easily thrown away. So, if we can make music out of rubbish, then there's nothing you can't achieve. So with hubcaps, tires, washing machine parts, all the, we are making instruments, and we've renamed them now, they are the Recycled Band. And now they can go to venues in Cape Town and show that these are street kids, but listen to their music, they create their own music, and that, we, you know, that will show people that, hey, as I say, if you can make music out of rubbish, there's nothing you can't achieve, so that's what we're doing. And here we have the kids now saying thank you. being shown to the guys, if you remember the ones that were singing at the back, these are the Salesian Street guys. You can see their faces. There's us. <laughs> time and uh, to, to send them that poem and as I need to end this talk now as they say thank you to everyone who contributed um, the kids were so thrilled you can tell everyone is delighted to be to be friends with you they just want to let you know and that's <laughs> Edmund and he didn't want to stop holding me and hugging me and kept kissing me <laughs> as I gave him, <laughs> gave him some money and as I say again it, when our kids go to bed they have to go upstairs 
And this is actually part of the model because it means that every step you take in life is a higher one. And the further that you go, you can see things from a completely different perspective. And as we go up, everything that we raise and everything we get, the photographs, the letters from Emma, the money, the photographs of Adam, the South Wirral, anybody who contributes is on the way up on the wall. And as the children are going to bed, they pat it and say thank you to the person who's helped them to get on that next step. And at the top of the step, we have the South Wirral school flag and all of that stuff, which means they all know that those people, as they're going up those steps, have helped them to reach the top. And so that's what we do there, and I hope it's shown you and given you an insight as to but you do Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that um, I mean one of the things that we were talk we've been talking about is it, it, and you look back on it and you think it's actually really quite selfish, isn't it? We've been talking about the impact that one world had on us and our kids and transition in those terms. But what's so significant is the impact that because it was that moral purpose, wasn't it? It was the fact that every parent who came had made a contribution by actually sitting and enjoying something and actually that the, the fact that all the students took part together it gave them that enormous sense. And I think it is incredibly powerful to see our one world video that we thought was wonderful anyway. But actually seeing the link with the kids in those And this is my philosophy because everybody, whichever if you have a faith or, or, or religion or whatever it is, in my philosophy, um, it's love is pure and simple. And it means that everybody has within them a flame which they can pass on. And you may indirectly think it's, it's for one area, but once you spread it and you send that out, it can develop into something so huge. So every one of the kids here has actually touched every one of the kids there. And not only that, the leaders, the whole school has lifted simply by you sharing. And that to me is, is, is the best way forward because if everybody links and everybody contributes again as i say everybody's part of the whole these kids don't think they belong but now they feel as if they are being seen and do belong and that's amazing you can't buy that can you and i think i think you know when we say what have we done as extended schools michelle well you know what we've done that really yeah. haven't we yeah. and and we <coughs> couldn't put a, a price on what that actually is and the impact in those terms, so that's something to be very great. And your money for. hasn't bought, how can I say? We're not a charity that would pay a luxury. It's, it, everything is a luxury to them, but into your, you know, a TV or a V, whatever, that's not important. But the uniform for the kids, hey mate, <laughs> I've got my bed.